Last but not least, I'm going to mention two other methods for segmentation. The first one is the watershed. The watershed algorithm is widely used because it is available in many packages and its implementation is um, simple enough but powerful enough to be used in several applications. It views the image as a topographic surface. The idea is that low intensities are interpreted as valleys of this surface, while high intensities appear as hills or peaks. The algorithm starts by filling valleys, so it starts from local minima. It is as if we have seeds, so we define seeds, that are sources of water, and then those every seed we can color it with a different colored water, and um, those, those uh, seeds are used to uh, flood such local minima in order to increase the amount of, say, water in each part. And then when different water in terms of color meet, a barrier is built to prevent them from merging, from leaking from, the, from one region to the other. This process of filling with water and barrier construction continues until all peaks are underwater. Then the barriers that were found uh, during this process represent the segmentation. The second method I'm going to mention is the hub transform. It isolates features of any particular shape in an image as long as we can write that in a parametric form. The classical hub transform is commonly used to detect regular curve, curves such as lines, circles, and other. I'm going to use a line to illustrate. We can represent a line by this equation here, y equals to mx times x plus c, or we can choose another parametric form. This, this other form here uses a distance rho and a angle theta as a as a uh, set of parameter so we can define a bidimensional space to map different lines the idea is that rho is the perpendicular distance from some origin to the line and theta is the angle formed by this perpendicular line with respect to the horizontal axis. I'm going to show you um, this in as an example. There is an accumulator, a matrix, use it to detect the existence of a line, describe it by this rho theta space. So the idea is that we, we can have different distances and different angles. Let's say that instead of having a histogram, Usually a histogram considers just one variable. In this case, we consider two variables. So different combinations of distances and angles. So different types of lines. Similarly uh, to the case of the watershed, instead of using directly the image, you are going to uh, often see the Huff transform implemented using the edge maps of the images. Let's say we have this image here on the top left, left side um, and the gray values here are the objects that we want to use as input and we want to detect lines in this, in this image. First, we're, what we are going to do is to compute edges and then we take points um, that, are, that lie in those edges. So as you can see here, I don't choose any points inside the circle. And in this case, to make it simpler, I don't define much points here, just sample a few of them. The idea of the Huff transform is as follows. We are going to fix one of those sampled points, and we are going to compute lines that can pass through this point. For example, this green line here and this blue line here. Those are lines that can pass through this point. And those lines can be defined by that rho theta space, right? Because, for example, the green line has 
from the origin here, it has a distance from that origin, perpendicular distance from that origin to the green line. And this forms a whole value, that is the distance here, in this axis. And the angle is the angle formed by um, taking that perpendicular line in, uh, with respect to the horizontal line. When we draw a second blue line here, this blue line is basically um, when we compute a different distance and angle. So in here, when we when we change the angle of the of the line, but keep the same point, what we have is we increase the angle, but we also also increase the distance from the origin to the line. So because of that we have that second point. So every point in this distance angle space represents a line in the image. However, we cannot uh, compute um, this continuously, so we're going to have to instead rely on a matrix of discrete values. This matrix is called the accumulator. So if we are able to compute a line in that positions then we count one here we count one from the from the for this green point one for this uh, blue point here okay so what can we do next we can go on and compute more uh, lines that are possible to be drawn from that initial point this will form in the matrix or in this space distance angle space in this uh, accumulator matrix a curve. I just interpolated the curve here to illustrate. So this forms the this curve here represents the possible lines that are drawn from using this point here. Okay, so what that means? So this first um, because I, I just computed from for this point here, this doesn't mean much. It will start to make sense when we do the same for the second point. When we do the same for the second point, let's say we just have used the same green line here, but we just translate it to that position. That means a parallel line. Okay, we when we get a parallel line in terms of the green um, the green line here, we change both the distance and the angle. Right? So the angle is very similar, but the distance changes. So that means that the green dot here that, were, that was computed first will appear in a different position. For the blue line, it happens similarly. So we change, so it just, if we just get the same line, uh, parallel line here for the second point, we are going to observe a different distance so probably this point will appear higher here however for the pink line when we compute it uh, in the second point we have an overlap so that means that line was possible two times it was possible here and it was possible also here and when we compute for all points here along the line the parameters that appear the most are the positions in which we have a more, a more probability of have a line. So usually in a, in a Huff transform we are going to see this space, a distance, uh, in this case of lines, a distance angle space, and many curves like that, and in the positions in which the curves they overlap each other, the points in which they mostly overlap are the regions in which there are most probably lines and then with a threshold we can then define the lines in the image and draw back because from the from the parameter space we can go back to the image and then draw a line in that position the half transform is um, although it's a, it's a simple method in some sense it's a little bit. It's a little um, um, computationally expensive because it relies on having to accumulate a matrix of different parameters. 
However, it is um, cheap enough to be uh, implemented in many scenarios, in many computer vision applications, and it's still used in such, uh, in such cases, especially as a part of a more, um, um, of a more complete um, pipeline of methods.